So welcome back to The Carpenter's Daughter. This week I had a break from DIY, but we are camping in our self-converted camper van. So if you're not caught up with how I converted it, I'm gonna leave the playlist below. There's quite a lot of videos. And it's a Mercedes Vito camper van. But pretty much the day I finished our bedroom renovation, we'd gone up north for some cooler weather, which meant we'd gone from one extreme to another because we'd been in a heat wave and we're gonna experience a lot of rain like it's winter time. So our first pit stop was Scarborough in North Yorkshire. It's a beautiful place and we've been several times, but we thought this was perfect to stretch our legs and our furry friend's legs. But if you've never been here before, there's a cliff you can walk up, but we were here briefly, but we decided to save our legs and took a ride up the funicular. I can't say that very well, but it's a train ride up. It takes maybe about 30 seconds and it's one pound each. The dog was free. It was quite a fun ride. Then it was time to head towards Scotland and it became quite a challenge to find anywhere that had some good weather. But we really wanted to go to Holy Island, which was near Berwick-upon-Tweed. And of course, with it being peak season, we couldn't find a campsite that wasn't hectic. But thankfully, we found this one called Budel Farm Campsite with a great view. And it was about a 20 minute drive. So I will leave location links below if it helps anyone. And this was £10 a night. It wasn't that busy, but that's probably because there were no showers or toilets, just an Elson point and a water point. And we much prefer a location like this where it's got direct access to the beach rather than being too inland. It was a very windy Saturday afternoon. In fact, I had to woolly up and wear my thick winter coat. And yes, I took a cuppa down with me. So now it's the next morning. And we thought, yep, yeah, let's go for a long walk. But the downside about this location is that it takes four hours and 24 minutes, according to Google Maps, to walk to Holy Island. And we've certainly done long walks like this there and back. And then it just wouldn't stop raining. Again, incredibly windy, but nothing stops hands. So we had to make a choice, are we gonna go on this walk or turn it into a pajama day in the camper? And the new series of Oranges and the New Black was on, so it was no contest. And now it's dinner. I went for a really lazy all day breakfast kind of dish in one. And when it got to night time, the views were absolutely stunning. I'd love to renovate an old wreck on a place like this. So after a couple of nights of camping there, we grabbed a breakfast at a local cafe and headed to Dunbar and tried to find any campsite by the beach that was available and then tried some old wild camping spots that we knew of. But all of them now had no overnight camping signs. So we drove to the other side of the country and managed to find this campsite in Maryport in Cumbria. And it was very much like an air in France. I think it was about £15 a night and it even had a bath. And that did it for me. And it was a great place to walk around with the dog, check the local area, and we had been here a couple of years ago, but so briefly, so we missed quite a few things. But this site is pretty much a car park, but most of the amenities are in the marina office. And it's quite discreet, so you're best going in and just asking. So we made a move and we found this hidden gem, a camping and caravanning club site tucked away. It didn't even come up in a local campsite search. And I think it might have been £10 a night with electric. And this was an awesome spot at a place called Haverick in Cumbria but I highly recommend this campsite because it's tucked behind the dunes and there's loads of places to walk around by the sea where you can have your dog off lead. And from what I remember, the area was famous for iron mining, but later we'd realized we'd accidentally lost Hans's lead and head collar. So we had to go all the way around and walk back. And that's when I strangely realized We'd been here before because there's a very bumpy track that you can drive on, but I couldn't believe I hadn't realised until I got my bearings right. And the local fish and chips is probably the nicest one I've had in quite a few years. So we're now towards the end of the week and this camping trip didn't really go as smoothly as we were hoping for. And everywhere we tried to go thereafter, the weather was so bad. So we tried my father-in-law's suggestion and that was to head to the Rutland Water Reservoir. This is such a stunning place and I can't believe we haven't been here before. And out of all of the campsites, this one was our favorite. It was pristine. There were no showers or anything, but we were only there for one night. And again, it was a camping and caravanning club site, but it was members only. So wherever there's a choice to do a whole loop, we challenged ourselves to walk all the way around. And we did it. But what we found is if you want to park in one of the car parks around, it was roughly about seven or eight pounds for the day, but only a few quid more for camping. So it was a no brainer for us, but there's lots of farms in the area around and you'll need to keep your dog on a lead for most of it, but it's a great place for picnics. And there was an aqua park in the area as well. Oh, and this was the only dog walking area that we found where you could let them off lead. 
So after a massive circular walk and finally some perfect weather, it was cheeseburgers. So that's it for this one. It wasn't quite our usual holiday, but we did find some hidden gems. So I'll leave all the links to those campsites below and hopefully I'll see you next week with a DIY project.